A shot list is a list of the camera shots that you need to get while you're filming. While other pre-production tasks, like scheduling and budgeting, are done by the first assistant director or another crew member, the shot list is usually created by the director of photography in conjunction with the director. Because our director of photography quit the project at the last minute, I ended up having to fill that role. So I didn't have any collaboration in the creation of the shot list, and I think our film really suffered for it. All components of filmmaking are benefited by collaboration, especially the making of the shot list. So how do you create a shot list? Well, we'll look at the mechanics of how to do that in the next tutorial. But the point is that you want to get enough footage so that the editor can tell the story in the best possible way in post-production. This is referred to as getting coverage of a scene. For example, if we just used a single shot to record the entire hut scene, the editor doesn't have any choices if there's a mistake, or if the scene needs to be tightened or more drawn out, or if the editor wants to use different shot sizes to control the emotion of the scene. So we got coverage. We have footage of Tayani putting the drawings away, and a close-up of Cordea reciting the poem, and many other clips from different angles, so we give the editor choices to play with in post-production. Generally speaking, it's good to make sure coverage includes wide shots, where we see the whole scene, these are often called establishing or master shots, medium shots, roughly from the hips up of characters, and tight shots, usually of the head. For conversations, it's also important to have a master shot where we see both parties speaking in the environment that they're speaking in, and a reverse shot for each person speaking. No matter what other tricky shots you want, having these three shot types is pretty standard. Of course, getting coverage is also a balancing act in a sense. In the shooting version of the script, the council scene was really important, and I wasn't sure which camera angles I wanted to end up using for the beginning part of the scene. So I got a bunch of them. Bunch of crazy weird ones. I got this one behind the head of the preacher that slides, you know. I got this one from the ground, like a low angle shot. I got this one from behind the crowd. This one a little bit closer than that. And all these shots took time. And when things take time, they also take money. And in this case, they also shortened the time that we had to shoot other, more pivotal scenes. Although in the end, I'm glad that we had a bit of extra footage to play with. After seeing the rough cut put together in post-production, I hated the film and rewrote it entirely from scratch and told a completely different story using the existing footage we had. So being able to choose from all the coverage we had enabled me to piece together something new. I think the secret to making shot lists is to get everything you need and then just a little bit more to be safe. You always want to make sure that you have an alternative shot in case something isn't working as planned in the edit. Now, that's the basics of what shot lists are, so you can skip the next tutorial if you want. But if you're interested, I'd like to share with you a personal preference I have about making shot lists. For the assurance, I made the shot list after we created the schedule and the budget, and I think this is pretty common. However, I don't think this is my ideal way to work. The reason is because I've found that the shot list actually has a lot of impact on the schedule and therefore the budget. This is actually something I learned on the assurance. After meeting with our first assistant director, Gavin Booth, we had a tentative you know, ballpark schedule and budget. But then after this, I made the shot list. And after making the shot list, I realized that I wanted the hut scene to feel static and I didn't want the camera to move. That meant that we didn't need our first assistant camera person because it's their job to pull focus on shots where the subject or the camera move a lot. This is also a shot in a tight location and, and didn't need and couldn't even fit a lot of crew members. So I revised the schedule to make that scene its own day with a very small crew, which is often called a skeleton crew. This saved the production tons of money. But we wouldn't have known to do this in the first place in that meeting back with Gevin before we ironed out the shot list. So even though a lot of professionals would consider this backwards, I actually make my shot list first and then use that to create the schedule and budget. Now, I don't think things are done this way on sets with bigger budget because they would always have all their gear and all their crew on hand in case they needed it. For super low budget films like The Assurance though, every dollar and every crew member and every gear rental, all that stuff adds up. So this way of working to create the shot list first has really helped me. Next, we'll look at actually making the shot list using a software application that has completely revolutionized my filmmaking preparations. 
And we'll also look at ways to change the order in which things are shot so that we are as efficient as possible on set.